Hi there, it's Lerald, and it's time for another class preview. Today I'm going to be talking about Vengeance Demon Hunters. What are Demon Hunters supposed to do once they've killed all the demons? I guess we'll find out in BFA. First things first, how does it play? I think this is well on its way to being the running joke of this video series, but it plays a lot like it does on live. The biggest changes are that, unlike on live where you had to balance two resources, soul fragments and pain, but your primary focus was on pain, now it's the opposite. Pain management is more or less automatic, something something aspirin. And soul management is the larger focus. Alright, on to what's changed, and there's a lot. Demon Spikes, your primary active mitigation spell, now grants armor based on your agility and costs zero pain to activate, down from 20. The recharge time has been increased from 15 seconds to 20, and the parry chance it provides has been decreased by 5% as well in order to compensate, but it is still reduced by haste. This is a really good change, and it uncomplicates the playstyle in a smart way. It also makes haste pretty clearly the best defensive stat for Demon Hunters instead of something that you just wanted to gear up to 20% and then, you know, move on to other better stats. Soul Cleave now costs exactly 30 pain and only consumes up to two soul fragments at a time. The Vengeance passive Demonic Wards has been reduced from 20% passive damage reduction to 10%. That's a pretty big nerf, but since Demon Hunters are the only class left with a pure damage reduction passive, they're still ahead of the pack. Lesser soul fragments granted by the base rotation no longer heal for a fixed amount. Instead, each of them heals for 8% of all damage taken over the past 5 seconds, with a minimum of 1% of max health. This is a cool change that doesn't really affect how the class feels under basic circumstances, but can make them a lot more resilient against super hard-hitting content. Also on that note, Sheer, the baseline pain and soul fragment generating ability, is now guaranteed to generate one soul fragment when you use it, rather than the small scaling chance to proc like it was during Legion. Next up, what's being lost from Legion? Empower Rewards is the only baseline ability being removed, and while it was useful during Legion for dealing with boss spell damage abilities, with the emphasis in BFA on taking spell damage reduction tools away from tanks, Demon Hunter's self-healing will more than fill the void Empower Rewards has left behind. With the artifact weapon going away, Vengeance DHs will lose Soul Carver, which let them quickly generate a bunch of soul fragments. It functioned primarily as an offensive cooldown, but it was a pretty nice self-healing cooldown as well. It's not a huge loss defensively, but it will definitely be noticed in the offensive rotation. Two of the biggest traits Demon Hunters will lose from the artifact are Charred Warblades and Painbringer, which represent pretty strong sources of self-healing and damage reduction, respectively. They didn't really affect the playstyle in a significant way though, so losing them won't be a huge deal. Other than that, the artifact's pretty meh from a defensive standpoint. Moving on to Legendaries. Demon Honors only really had a couple of play style altering pieces, so let's touch on them quickly. Oblivion's Embrace granted an extra charge to empower wards, which won't even exist anymore, and Demon Spikes. I'd take Demon Spikes having no pain cost over having a third charge, which is good because that's the only choice we have, so I guess we're getting it whether we like it or not. Corelna Rock really increased the usage rate of Fiery Brand, especially in AoE. It would be nice if this came back as a talent of some kind, but it hasn't so far and not looking that likely. Let's move on to what's been added, which is the shortest list yet. Chaos Brand is a debuff that all Demon Hunters apply to their targets just by doing non-physical damage. It causes the target to take 5% extra magic damage from all sources. This will make having a Demon Hunter around pretty nice. Alright, now that the base class stuff is covered, let's look at talents. Vengeance talents have changed quite a bit from live. At this point, the most popular live talent setup seems to be the one used on beta as well. Three old talents have been completely removed. Blade Turning and Fell Eruption were both pretty weak talents and won't really be missed. And Demonic Infusion really didn't fit in with the redesigned of Demon Spikes. Alright, let's go through the tree and break it down. The first tier of talents is nearly the same as it was in Legion. Abyssal Strike and Agonizing Flames are unchanged, and Razor Spikes has been nerfed quite a bit, going from a 30% damage increase and 50% slow to only a 15% damage increase and a 20% slow. This is on top of the reduction in Demon Spikes uptime, so really this talent tier is still just going to be Abyssal Strike all the way. In the next tier, the healing calculation for Feast of Souls has been changed to only scale with attack power instead of a mix of attack power and max health, but it's really still just a bad talent, and the tier is otherwise all the same. The third tier has our first total talent change. 
Fell Eruption has been replaced with a version of Charred Flesh from the Artifact Weapon, and Fell Blade now generates 30 pain, up from 20. Unfortunately, the tuning on Charred Flesh, along with losing the artifact traits that increase the duration of Fiery Brand, basically mean this talent's just really not that good now. In the next tier, Soul Rending has been redesigned to give some passive leech, but it's still really bad. Feed the Demon has been nerfed by 50%, but the changes to Demon Spikes still make it pretty appealing. Finally, Fracture has been radically redesigned, and it is now a pain generator that replaces Shear and generates two soul fragments and 25 pain with every cast. It has two charges on a 4.5 second base recharge that's shortened by haste. Basically, this means that there can be some gaps in the rotation, which players obviously aren't thrilled about. But it winds up playing a surprising amount like the live rotation, despite all these radical changes. Everything is exactly the same in the next tier. Yup. The next to last tier has some pretty big changes. Gluttony from the Artifact Weapon has made its way into the Talent Tree, and unfortunately it's just as unreliable as it was in the Artifact. Without any of the traits that increased its duration or the effectiveness of Metamorphosis, this really just isn't a great defensive tool. This talent is just too unreliable to be good, even if it were strong. Which it's not. Fell Devastation is the same AoE DPS and healing cooldown as ever, and it's still pretty forgettable. Spirit Bomb has been changed a lot. Its leech debuff has been cut in half, and it now costs 30 pain and consumes up to 3 soul fragments per cast. The revamp takes some getting used to at first, but it plays pretty well with the revamped fracture and is still a great source of reliable self-healing. It's also worth noting that all of the talents and traits that work with Soul Cleave still don't work with Spirit Bomb and I think Blizzard probably intends that you keep Soul Cleave on your bars and BFA alongside Spirit Bomb. I played around with it, and it can be a useful pain dump when you don't have any Soul Fragments active, but I found those spots to be really uncommon. And here we have the last tier. Last Resort is still the same, Void Reaver has replaced Demonic Infusion and really isn't very good at all, and Soul Barrier is now in the global cooldown and no longer costs 10 pain to cast. Unfortunately, it now just works like a normal Absorb Shield instead of being impossible to reduce below a minimum value like it was in Legion. Here's a talent setup I would run for both dungeons and raiding. The only talents I would change around, at least at this point, are Sigil of Chains for a little extra CC in dungeons, and Last Resort if I really needed that random death protection in raid. Before I finish up, and as always this part of the video is extra special super duper subject to change, I want to go over Azerite traits. There appear to be five Vengeance Demon Hunter traits at this point. The first one is Revel in Pain, which adds an Absorb Shield onto the end of Fiery Brand. Doing enough damage to make sure the Absorb is maxed out was really easy, and the Absorb is pretty substantial. While I don't usually love bonuses that just add more defense onto a defensive cooldown, this one seems like it could be pretty decent. Next is Infernal Armor, which is great. It turns your best AoE damage skill into a nice little offensive and defensive gain, and just like the skill it's modifying, works better the more enemies you're tanking. It's a very solid trait. Soulmonger is the next trait, and it simply adds an Absorb Shield onto your primary healing mechanic. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that design, as I think DK's interaction with Deathstrike and Blood Shield has shown us over the years. Again, a very solid trait. Gaping Maw is the only weak trait of the bunch, and while the design is decent, it only functions off of Soul Cleave. So... no... Finally, Rigid Carapace makes Demon Spikes grant you a stacking armor buff that lasts longer than Demon Spikes itself. It's a weird design, and how good it is will depend on exactly how it's tuned, but it looks pretty good so far. So now for the two most important questions. Is Vengeance still fun, and is it good? I was really surprised during Legion that Vengeance Demon Hunters were never really very strong tanks. They ended the expansion pretty well balanced, but by comparison, Brewmasters started out as the weakest tanks in Mists of Pandaria and were by far the strongest tanks by the time that expansion ended. Not so for Vengeance. They are by far the kings of tank DPS in Legion, but I don't really know what that gets you at this point in WoW. A paper crown from Burger King? With the shift away from killing demons to killing trolls and pirates, Vengeance Demon Hunter damage will take a step down. Fortunately for them, their defenses and self-healing tools are also transitioning to be less dependent on Leech, which means that losing that DPS won't have big defensive repercussions. 
Overall, I think Vengeance Demon Hunter's defensive toolkit is moving in a direction that will make them more consistent and more competitive in this expansion. The class is still as fun as ever, and I think their future is a lot brighter than their past. Well, I think that about covers it. If you have any questions about Vengeance Demon Hunter, ask away. I will be previewing the rest of the tank classes in the days and weeks to come, so stay tuned for more great BFA beta content. And as always, please like and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Bye.